The following tutorial covers how to annotate a gene for gene interaction in Phycanto. When you have one gene controlling the resistance in your host that's interacted with one specific avirulence gene in the pathogen, then you need to annotate a gene for gene interaction. And this tutorial will cover that. So for this example, I will be working with the gene for gene interaction between a pathogen gene ATR1 from Alioperinospora arabidopsis and the R gene from arabidopsis RPP1. Before I go ahead and start with the creation of the metagenotypes, it is important to curate uh, some Go terms for the pathogen's effector. So we're going to go uh, to ATR1 and we need to curate the um, a go term for biological process, which is an effector mediated modulation of uh, the host processed by a symbiont. So this is very important when we are curating our gene for gene interactions um, that have um, an effector involved. If um, one of this child terms apply, then you choose it, otherwise just proceed. We need to choose uh, the evidence goal for this um, go term, which is inferred from a mutant phenotype. If you need help with this evidence goal, um, you can always go to our help section and there is a video that covers go terms um, where you can find more information. So then proceed. Um, we might want to curate one of these annotation extensions, otherwise proceed, and in this case we won't add any more information. If, as usual, we have a figure or table where this information came from or, in a, or some comment that we want to add, we put it in. And uh, This is not the case, so then proceed. And we have um, the Go biological process here. We might also want to add a Go molecular function, uh, which is um, the case here. So the term um, that I want to curate as a Go molecular function is that I'm having protein binding. And we have a lot of specific terms that um, could be applicable to our um, situation. Um, so you can choose from here and if none of this apply you can always suggest a new term or if none of these terms are correct and you also don't need a new term added then just uh, go on to proceed. Uh, we are now going to choose the evidence code which is inferred from physical interaction. I need to choose um, the gene that this is happening with and in this case it is with the host genes are PP1. So then let's move on to proceed and here I want to use an annotation extension right because I want to say that this um, protein binding, right, that I am describing, is involved in a biological process, which is an effector mediated modulation of a host processed by a symbiont. So then let's go on to next. I don't want any of this uh, specific available terms. And then proceed. I will tell from which figures I got this from. I don't have any comments to add, so then proceed. And um, I now have uh, this um, Go molecular function curated for the pathogen's effector. So now we will start with the curation of the metagenotypes phenotypes. So as usual I will go to the metagenotype management section and then I will choose the wild type allele of the pathogen's gene ATR1 and I, I will 
begin with this this wild type allele from this strain Emoi 2 and in the case of the host I will choose the chin from the ecotype Basilesia and then I just click on make metagenotype and as you can see I have now the metagenotype down here and then I will choose to annotate not a pathogen host interaction phenotype but a gene for gene phenotype because um, this is a, a gene for gene interaction right so this is very important so we go here and now the process is very similar to what I've shown before when curating pathogen host interactions. So we start by writing down uh, the phenotype that we observed, which in this case is the presence of host induced lesions by host hypersensitive response. Uh, once again, I might have specific terms to choose from. If they are not um, applicable, then I just go on to proceed and I need to choose um, how I observed this phenotype in this case is a macroscopic observation and a qualitative one. I can um, also add the experimental conditions. So in this case I want to specify the delivery mechanism which was using agrobacteria and that this was done in a heterologous species. So tobacco. Good. Then just proceed. Now um, first let's start by saying the host tissue that, that was infected, which in this case was the leaf. So now that we have uh, specified the um, host tissue that is infected, we need to s describe what type of gene for gene interaction we have. So for that we go here and you have different options um, based on whether you have a compatible or an incompatible interaction. And um, if you uh, go onto one of them, you will see that an explanation appears that um, will guide you right in deciding uh, which of these options is the right one for you. In my case, I'm talking about an incompatible interaction, right? Because I have a, I do have the pathogen effector present, and that it has been recognized by the um, R gene from the host, which is functional. So I choose this, then OK. So then let's go on to proceed. And once again, I need to put in the figure where this comes from, and. Now you can always put some comments like this is a control um, then just go on to proceed and I have my gene for gene phenotype curated. So as you can see I now have this um, gene for gene phenotype that I've curated between the wild type um, pathogen allele and the wild type host allele. I also um, curated a second gene for gene phenotype between this pathogen um, allele that has a deletion, but in this publication, um, these, uh, allele, uh, this allele is considered a like a wild type allele uh, because we're going to be using this uh, for our comparisons um, with other metagenotypes later. So we have these examples using wild type allele, so to speak, but we can also do uh, gene for gene phenotypes using um, deletion alleles or, or other type of mutated alleles, which is um, what I am going to show um, right now. And for that, we're going to be creating a host genotype and that uh, has a partial deletion. So let's go on to the host genotype management tab. We're going to be creating um, another genotype, in this case, the name is going to be RPP1. The strain is Vasileskia. And the type of allele, like you said, is going to be a partial deletion of amino acids. So I need to specify uh, which are the deleted amino acids, which in this case go from the 266 amino acid till the 1221. And I also need to tell the um, level of expression of this um, allele if it was assayed which in this case it wasn't, so not assayed, and OK. So I have now my new uh, genotype. I will. Al I also want to add a background because uh, this has an HA tag. And good. So now I can go on to the uh, metagenotype meta management section and I will be choosing this pathogen allele, like I said, that works as a wild type. And I will be choosing the new host genotype that I've just created. So let's make the metagenotype. And as you can see, it appears down below. And now I can start curating a gene for gene phenotype for it. 
So in this case, the phenotype is the absence of host defense-induced lesions. This specific term does not apply, so proceed. This was observed uh, with a macroscopic observation, but a qualitative one. These experimental conditions that I've used before uh, still apply, so that's faster. Then proceed, and we'll start by specifying the tissue that was infected, which was the leaf, once again. And now we will um, describe the gene for gene interaction, like we did before. And this time around, what we have is a compatible interaction, because we have the recognizable pathogen effector, but the resistant gene has been comprom compromised because this was a partial deletion earlier, right? So we click on OK. And what we can also curate is the control genotype, which was this metagenotype that I showed you earlier between this um, wild type pathogen allele, uh, right? Uh, and um, the wild type host allele. So then let's click on OK and then proceed. And once again, we need to tell from which figure this comes from and any comments. So this comes from figure 5b. So I do have a comment that I want to add here. You know that um, I feel it's important when I'm curating this phenotype. So then let's just go on to proceed. And I have my gene for gene phenotype curated. Now for this metagenotype that I've just um, that I've just been working on, there is a second uh, gene for gene phenotype that I can curate. So what I will do is copy and edit. Right, so the metagenotype remains the same, but the phenotype that um, that I will be describing is different. So I will go here, delete this one. So in in this case, what I did was a commune participation, right? And what I observed was the absence of uh, a pathogen protein host protein interaction. So obviously the um, evidence code, right? How I observed this has changed. This was a commune precipitation. I now need to look at the annotation extensions, which have obviously changed because I've changed the phenotype that I observed. So for this phenotype that, I, that I've chosen, right, which involves interaction of two proteins, I need to say which proteins are involved. And I have a drop-down menu, and I, in this case, I just have two um, uh, proteins to choose from. So first, um, I'll choose the one from the pathogen, and then I click once more, and I will choose the one from the host. So I now have to once again specify the host issue that was infected, which in this case was the leaf. I also need to once again <laughs> fill in the control genotype, which which is this one over here. And I have to curate the gene for gene interaction. We had said before this was a compatible interaction with a com compromised host resistant gene. So okay. So that's done. Um, the uh, experimental conditions are still the same. The comment has changed a little bit, so I'm going to change it. And the figure is now 5C. Good, so if I scroll down, I now have my new phenotype for this metagenotype interaction. So I have now shown a gene for gene interaction between a mutated host allele, right, and a wild type pathogen allele. But of course, we could have the opposite situation, right? Where the wild type allele is with the host and the mutated allele is with the pathogen. So I'm going to be showing that. But before that, we need to create some genotypes and metagenotypes. So let's go on to pathogen genotype management. And for creating the new pathogen genotype, I'm going to take this wild type uh, genotype and I'm going to do copy and edit. So th this allele will have these amino acids um, that were deleted, but it will also have an amino acid that was changed, uh, glutamic acid, lysine. They need to choose a strain, mask 9. The allele type has obviously changed. It is a partial deletion with an amino acid change. And I need to type in so the um, deleted alleles and the amino acid that was changed. 
um, I also need to report on the expression level, which in this case was not assayed. And then I click on OK. And I have my new genotype. I'm just going to edit the background, because this has Citrine tag. And so now I can go into the meta genotype management part. And we're going to be creating a couple of meta genotypes. So I will be creating first the meta genotype that I will be using as a control for this interaction. And that is between this genotype here and this one from the host. So let's make the meta genotype, which is here. I will now be curating the gene for gene interaction, but let's make now the second uh, meta genotype, which was between this um, new genotype that I had created and the same host um, allele. So make meta genotype, right? And now I have my new my two new meta genotypes down below. So I will start by curating the control meta a meta genotype. So let's go on to gene for gene phenotype. And in this case, the phenotype is the absence of host defense induced lesions. Then we go on to proceed. This was observed with a macroscopic observation. This remains the same. And so the host tissue is leaf. And the gene for gene interaction in this case is the it's a compatible interaction because the pathogen effector is absent but we do have the host resistant gene so okay then proceed let's put the figures figures 3b and 8b and i'm gonna put a little comment here then proceed and i have my um, phenotype already curated so let's go back to the metagenotype management section because as you recalled we created a second metagenotype with the mutated pathogen allele. So now we're going to curate the phenotype for this one. So in this case we're having the presence of host defense induced lesions. This was also observed with a, a microscopic observation. This is also still the same and the host tissue is again the leaf. Now, because we, we have already created our control metagenotype, now we can choose. Uh, we can choose it. So, which is uh, this one over here? We have to describe once again the gene for gene interaction. So, in this case, we are having an incompatible interaction because we have gained a recognizable pathogen effector. Uh, but the functional host, well, that remains the same. So, we choose this option. Then OK, and then proceed. So this comes from figure 8b, and I'm going to put a um, small comment. And let's go on to proceed. And I have my new gene for gene phenotype. So let's go to the summary. And I have the control metagenotype that I curated. And I also have the metagenotype with the mutated pathogen allele. So we have now curated several examples of gene for gene phenotypes. And what we can also do now is um, curate the information about the disease. So let's go on to the metagenotype management section. Like I've explained this in, in a previous video, uh, diseases need to be curated between a wild type pathogen allele and a wild type host allele. In this particular case, we have several strains from the pathogen as well as several ecotypes for the host. So we can curate the disease name um, several times depending on what metagenotype we are talking about. Also, like I've mentioned before, this allele, though it has a deletion, is considered a wild type allele for this publication. So the disease names will be curating using this allele even though it's an allele that has a deletion. So I have the metagene types already created. So for example, this is a wild type pathogen allele and a wild type host allele. So I will annotate the disease name, which is T downy L2. And the host tissue that's infected, it's T leaf. This comes from figure, from figure one. And I now have the disease name. But like I said, we have different pathogen strains, different 
Walter Pico type. So let's go back to metagenotype management. And this other metagenotype between the pathogen strain M1 and the ecotype for the host is Vasileskia. This is also a wild type metagenotype interaction. So we can once again annotate the disease name here, which is also the downy mildew. The host tissue that's infected, it's still the leaf. And the figure is also figure one. And uh, if I go to the summary, I scroll down. I have in the disease names uh, section my two annotations. That is the same disease, downy mildew. It's just that the pathogen genotypes are different and the host genotypes are different. If you need some more information about curating gene for gene interactions, you can always go on to our help section and on to the gene for gene phenotypes part. And you can always contact us at Vicanto, where we'll be more than happy to assist you.